The stage is set for two of Malaysia's biggest Malay-based parties to join forces. Opposition parties UMNO and PAS will sign a charter at a two-day unity gathering in Kuala Lumpur. This is uh, only a beginning and uh, what is important for us is the end product. So we would like to see and we expect uh, uh, overwhelming response not only from uh, AMNO and PAS uh, party members. In an effort to appeal to the wider public, AMNO and PAS sent an open invitation to everyone. Over 10,000 people are expected to attend the massive two-day rally. Our senior correspondent Melissa Go is in Kuala Lumpur with the details. So, Mel, what's the significance of this two-day rally? And, you know, realistically, what can we expect? Well, this is the first time that we are seeing uh, in youth wings from both parties are gathering here at the UMNO headquarters. They performed Friday prayers together earlier uh, with the UMNO president, Zahid Hamidi, and his deputy, Mat Hassan. Now, also present was deputy president of the Islamic Opposition Party, uh, Duan Ibrahim. Uh, for many past youth members and also for the women that you can see behind me, this is the first time they are here mingling with UMNO uh, members to further Muslim unity to strengthen Islam. Now it's a session to get together, to get to know each other better, building the chemistry as AMNO president puts it. Now tonight thousands will be here hearing speeches of AMNO and past deputy presidents before uh, the signing of the covenant or the piagam or the charter tomorrow after hearing messages from the president, Abdul Hadi Awang of PAS and Zahid. Now it will be interesting to see what's in the charter itself the rules and the general policy direction as well as the relationship with the non-Malay opposition parties. Now don't forget, Barca Nacional Opposition Coalition includes the Indian-based MIC and MCA, the Chinese party. Now it's unclear whether their leaders will turn up tomorrow, but presidents are keeping mum their presidents. Now the charter will pave the way basically for the eventual uh, tie-up of the pact ahead of the next general election, which is not due till year 2023. Mel, what does this alliance mean for the ruling uh, party, Pakistan Harapan? Should they be concerned? Well, judging from previous by-elections uh, in Malaysia that saw PAS and UMNO coming together, working on the ground to win the Malay support, it seems to have worked, that formula, especially in the rural and semi-rural areas. Now, there are over 100 seats, I was told by analysts, with this kind of demography. So analysts are saying that it is a cause for concern for Pakatan Harapan coalition, in particular the Malay-based party, Bersatu, led by Dr. Made. Now, his party is small compared with the Chinese-based DAP, the Democratic Action Party, and the multiracial PKR. Now, for the first time, the ruling coalition said doesn't have a strong Malay core, Malay party, but Bersatu leaders are unfair. I spoke with them. They believe that an ethnically homogeneous coalition, uh, Amno Pass, that based their power in the West Malaysia alone will not go far. So long as Pakatan Haraban fulfills electoral promises to the people, focus on the people, they will continue to support them. But many, especially the Malay grassroots, are gathering here. They are worried about their special rights and status being eroded under Pakatan Harapan, where DAP is perceived to be calling the shots, they said. So there are concerns uh, Pakatan, for Pakatan going forward, uh, whether they'll be dancing to the tune of Amno Pass, uh, whether you know, it will become more and more Islamic in the policy decision and so on, in order to appease the Malay ground. No, we'll, have to, we'll be watching this space closely. Thanks very much for that. Melissa Goh speaking to us from Kuala Lumpur. And also joining us for more on this pack, Mr. Ibrahim Sufyan, Program Director at the Medeka Center. And he's also speaking to us from Kuala Lumpur. First up, is this back to good old days between UMNO and PAS before their bitter split? Or is it just perhaps maybe a marriage of convenience here? Well, I think the circumstances that are bringing these two parties together is very different than what took place in 1974. Uh, in the sense that uh, back in the day, PAS joined AMNO when AMNO was in the ruling government and therefore it became part of a ruling government and had access to power and the instruments uh, with which it could um, expand its influence. But in the current iteration, you know, they are both opposition parties and PAS is largely a regional party centered in the northeastern corner of the peninsula and AMNO uh, is severely weakened after the general election and the defections that we've seen. The AMNO that we see today is not the AMNO of 2018. It is now a ramp AMNO uh, centered only in the hinterlands of uh, West Malaysia. 
so when I look at this, it is in many ways uh, an attempt to consolidate Malay political support. And I think PAS has joined in because it has nothing to lose in this current arrangement. Uh, but I think there is a limit to how far this uh, coalition parties, you know, PAS and AMNO, is going to move in its effort to try and wrest away support from Pakatan, especially PAS, because it has two state governments and it relies on some goodwill in, in good relationship with the federal government so that they can get the oil royalties paid to their state government. So there is a limit to how far they can take this politically. What about, let's come back to AMNO then, how will this alliance change the way that they operate? You mentioned that they're in a much weaker position now. Well, you know, AMNO is in many ways trying to survive. Uh, and it is interesting that, you know, uh, at the point in time when former president uh, Najib Raza, you know, entered into the court trial, and then party president Zahid Hamidi, he has 87 charges laid against him, and his trial hasn't really commenced. So we're going to see the top leaders of AMNO undergoing very severe uh, stress, you know, in the legal processes that's going to come in. And so this is still very, very early days. Uh, and for AMNO, I think this act of bending together with PAS is in many ways to try and salvage a situation that will soon get very worse. Uh, that said, you know, uh, they do have latent support from a majority of the Malay electorate, but it is still a long ways to the next election, and Pakatan Harapan is still only uh, commenting on its reform agenda, and it may turn things around in the next couple of years. So these are very early days, and I think one can't say that this is going to be uh, a, a certainty in, uh, so in the survival of AMNO and PAS. All right, so if, if that's the case, and you mentioned that, as the, you know, to a certain degree, they can only wrest so much from Pakatan Harapan. It, then are they not a threat to the Pakatan Har ha government and also to its leaders, especially Dr. Bahavia and Mr. Anwar? Yes, I, I mean, if we look at the by-elections, certainly there is a threat because we've seen some small by-elections in which uh, Pakatan Harapan has lost and the past AMNO combination has been able to take away a significant chunk of the Malay electorate. Uh, but when we look at the reasons why voters have shifted support, it's not so much that people have given the trust back to AMNO or PAS, but rather some disappointment about the slow pace of reforms undertaken by Pakatan, the inability to deliver on its populist campaign messages. Assuming that Pakatan makes good on its promises over the coming years and that some of its initiatives uh, turn things around economically, uh, it might still be able to contest the election uh, on a fair footing against PAS and AMNO. In addition to that, uh, AMNO's leadership is going to go through stresses, and we think that you know, there's going to be leadership changes and a lot of shake-up in the party in the coming months and perhaps year ahead. And what about then this alliance, this PAS AMNO alliance? What does it mean for non-Malays and non-Malay parties in Malaysia? Well, I think by working together with PAS, you know, AMNO has basically relegated its non-Malay coalition partners to the sidelines. I mean, we are not certain whether their leaders are going to show up, uh, and it certainly, you know, uh, pushes AMNO further and further to the right-wing uh, extreme of the Malay political spectrum. And it also not just alienates them from the uh, ethnic minorities in the country, but also the Bumiputra, in Sabah and Sarawak. So it makes it a very odd situation. And, you know, given the track record and the experience of AMNO, and, you know, frankly speaking, the sizable pool of talent that still resides in the party, by engaging uh, with PAS in such a manner, it is relegating itself into a one-issue party that harps on race and religion at its main core business. Whereas, in reality, it has a, a long-standing track record of development, of pretty good policies over the last few decades. So I think they've decided to put that on the side and decided to take an easy way out uh, to try and campaign just based on populism and emotion. M Mr. Ibrahim, really quickly, are we seeing identity politics gaining traction in Malaysia? Well, I think it is, you know, in the sense that for these two parties, they are, I think, in, in, in a situation of survival, uh, partly because they have lost so much and uh, they are under legal stress. Not just the leaders, but the parties themselves are under legal action 
um, you know, AMNO itself is undergoing civil forfeiture proceedings for receiving funds from the travel company 1MDB. So I think in the coming months and years, we are going to see uh, the organization itself uh, having to grips, having to call into account in terms of how it has been funded. Uh, so it certainly is in many ways fighting for survival. And therefore, identity politics is the easiest trigger uh, to pull in such a situation. But I think Malaysian voters, by and large, are going to look not just on sentiments, but also look at policy, deliverables, and also authentic, uh, genuine leadership. I think that's key here. And I think by, by going in such a traction, uh, AMNO and PAS is actually uh, not playing to their strengths. All right, thank you very much for your analysis. We've been speaking with Mr. Ibrahim Sufyan, Program Director at the Medeka Centre, speaking to us from Kuala Lumpur.